3D Boxing, he would undefeated Kevin Thunderstorm Johnson. Uh, famous name for a number of reasons, uh, but he's looking to take it to the next level. Uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin mm -hmm. Johnson, introdu introduce yourself. Um, tell What's us going on, my name? What's going on? Uh, name's Kevin Thunderstorm Johnson, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Re residency here in Las Vegas, training out the Mayweather Boxing Club. And um, yeah, let's get it. I want to ask you, there was- And I really want to also appreciate 3D for having me, you know what I mean, on the stream. Of course, of course. Um, I want to ask you about your name first. Obviously, there was a heavyweight world title challenger with that name. There's a, I guess, Hall of Fame point guard with that same name. How important is it to you to carry the legacy of that name and be the most successful Kevin Johnson in the sporting world? Yeah, you know, so crazy. And um, Kevin Johnson, when, when uh, I got into boxing, uh, everybody kept saying that, uh, oh, we have basketball, famous basketball player named Kevin Johnson. Very good, very great athlete. So I ended up looking him up and like, no, nah, he's, man, he was the real deal, honestly, man. And um, yeah, yeah. it's so crazy too, cause I also play other sports, and one and one of basketball. I mean, one of the sports I play is basketball as well. So the similar styles that we have, just like in in in, uh, in the sports and in in basketball. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, now you turned pro in in 2016. Is that correct? Yep. Uh, you grew up in Detroit. Famous fight city, a lot of great fighters coming out of Detroit. Talk about your start in boxing. When did you start? And talk a little bit about your amateur career, just your your start in the sport of boxing. Yeah, so I uh, started my boxing career when I was 15 years old in Detroit, Michigan. My brother got me into boxing, and um, I ended up enjoying it. I mean, I was into, I ended up love it. You know what I mean? It's something I wanted to do um, as far as to take it to new heights. In my amateur career, you know, I've been like I've been I've been sparring undefeated professional fighters, tough fighters. Um, been um, even the amateurs. You know, what I'm saying I, I just I, when I started my first amateur bout, it was against somebody who was uh, ten fights in. You know what I mean? So I've been I already had this uh, gift. You know what I mean in boxing. You know, it's God gifted me, gifts gifted me in this boxing career. You know, since and with the talent I have to, you know, display. It, you know, so but and, um yeah, in my boxing career, I mean my amateur career, I've been sparring a lot of. I mean, I've been fighting a lot of tough fights, opponents. You know, and I've been winning also. You know, only with one hand. And to be honest, I've been winning with one hand, only a jab. I never threw my right hand. I want to. Is that a hand injury? Have you had an injured right hand in the past, or, or no? It was. It was just a style that I have. You know. Um, I thought that if I throw my right hand, if I throw my right hand, I'm open for a shot. So I was very, very cautious about throwing my right hand. I threw it here and there, but most of the most of the time, I was beating everybody with jabs, jabs, hooks. You know what I mean? Jab, hooks, right hand. Um, but you know, once again, um, more so jab, 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 jab to the body, jab to the top, double jab. J you know what I mean? Just jabs, just jabs, bro, honestly. So uh, talking about a little bit about your style in the ring, obviously you grew up in Detroit, the famous style. They're talking about, you know, what kind of fighter are you? And just, just kind of describe your style in the ring. Obviously, you're, you're very athletic. You, you, you got good speed. Talk about your, mm -hmm. your style in the ring. My style in the ring, um... There's no words could to explain it. I don't know who had. I don't. I think I have like a Tommy Harns slash um, Leonard Sugar Ray Leonard type of style. Pernell Whitaker. Those just those those fighters right there. I'll say because I have speed. I have defense. You know what I mean. And I and I, I can stay long. I can stay long range. I can stay rangy, or I can come in close. So my style is can change up the, according to my opponent and that will make and that makes me a problem for a lot of fighters because a lot of fighters been, don't know how to change up you have been a problem for a lot of fighters um and, and people look at your record you're 12 and 3 and they, they may get the wrong impression on just how talented and how skilled you are we were talking a little bit about off air 
you're six and two. You've beaten six undefeated fighters. Six people who've never lost before took their first O to you. Yeah. Like, there's world mm-hmm. champions who don't have that kind of pedigree, right? Like, you were not given an easy yeah. route. You weren't yeah. given a bunch of cab drivers to beat up on to build your record. So I want to go back. Absolutely not. I want to go back to the beginning. 2016, you turned pro in Philadelphia, correct? Um, yeah. What What made you decide, okay, now is the right time. I want to turn pro now. And, and how did you make that decision? Um, I turned, I, I, don't, I, I forgot the reason why I turned pro. Um, probably, probably because I was going to have another, another baby, I guess. I don't know. But, <laughs> but I don't know the reason why I turned pro, honestly. Um, but I knew that I wanted to turn pro. And I feel like I told my coach Otis, I said, my last tournament, because I kept getting robbed in uh, gold, Golden Gloves. I kept getting robbed. You know what I mean? Like, I beat the guy, and then I get robbed. So, like, here and there, yeah, I passed some, some uh, Golden Gloves. But every, t- every tournament that I have, I'm always getting robbed, right? So, um, so I told Otis, like, all right. This power tournament's coming up, you know what I mean? I'm gonna do my best. I'm I'm going out because at the, at that time in amateurs I was at 154, you know what I mean? I was at one. I started at 140, and then um I wasn't taking boxing serious. I wasn't running, doing my road work or help, you know what I mean? So I just end up, you know, um gaining weight as 154. So I've been fighting a lot of fighters at one um a lot of fighters at 154. So I told Otis, all right, this power tournament's coming up. At 140, I'm going to make a statement. You know what I mean? I'm going all in. I'm going to do my road work. I'm eating healthy. I'm training hard. You know what I mean? Because this will, this will determine uh, when, I, when I go and go. Is that I do? How is that? I, this is the, to the will determine is I'm going to go pro. You know what I mean? So... Yeah. Short, short story, short stories. Um, I ended up doing really well. I got to the semifinals. I lost to Erickson Lubin, and e- even with Erickson Lubin, I, I he beat me by one point. I was winning the rounds, but like I said, I got robbed. I honestly got robbed because the um, ref gave me an eight count, and I wasn't really hurt. You know what I mean? So. Uh, that it was about one. It was about one point. You know, what I mean, it was about one point to Eric yeah. Lubin, and then I just decided to go pro after that. You know, what I'm saying because I'm like, man, you know, can't keep. I can't keep that up. You know, what I'm saying so. You uh, you made the right decision turning pro. Like I said, you, you ran off four straight victories. You got wins in Philadelphia. You got another win in, in Mexico and Tijuana, and that sets up the, your first big fight. Like your first. Fight of note, you fight Flavio Rodriguez, who's a really touted prospect, eight and zero at the time, um, and so it's in uh, California, correct? And it's yes, it was promoted by Leo Santa Cruz, the legendary Leo Santa Cruz is the promoter. Talk about that card and, and how big of an opportunity was that, and what were your thoughts going into that fight with Flavio Rodriguez? Um, the the event was uh, amazing. You know, what I mean, the event was amazing. Um, once again, I already knew my skills. I didn't did it didn't matter who they put me in against with. Um, I know how I am. You know, I put myself on a high pedestal because I know what I can do. Um, but going into that fight, fight, you know, um, it was it was mindset was like just win. You know what I mean? Box. You know, I, I I'm a great boxer. You know what I mean? So. I, I ended up boxing him the whole t- tie around. He had a big cut, a big cut on his um, face that I gave him. And um, I just kept aiming for it, aiming for it, you know. And the judges saw it. It was it was, it was, was a very side, one-sided fight, honestly. The judges had to get to me. Well, you were going in enemy territory. He, he was the prospect to keep an eye on. He was 8-0. He was the guy that right. a lot of people were looking at at the time. You were supposed yeah. to lose that fight. They wanted to use your undefeated record to say, look, he beat an undefeated fighter, and, and yeah. then that backfired. Did yeah, that change, exactly. Did right. start to open up more doors for you? Had, did anything change in your career after that, or, or, or what happened next? Um, Not really. Um, I honestly continued uh, to take on another undefeated fighter. 
you know, at, at that time, you know, after after um, that fight, I end up taking. Uh, let me let's go, let's go to another undefeated fighter, you know, and, and next and the next, you know what I mean? So that fight right there, when I took that undefeated record, I was I'm like, and, and I was on a B side. I'm not, I was ex, I was excited, you know what I mean? I was excited. I was like, yeah, this is this is what I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying? A side, B side doesn't matter. You know what I mean? To me, you know what I mean? A side, B side doesn't matter. It's all about skills. You know, you, you, at the end of the day, the fan, opponent, that's for sure. You, you, like I said, you fought in eight undefeated fighters, which is, which is crazy. I mean, right. Uh, also in that, in that run, you beat a, a guy named Isaac Luda, who's from Texas. You beat him in, in Vegas. You beat another undefeated fighter named Larry Gomez. I guess that was in Vegas too, correct? Uh, who was eight no at the time? Yep, that was in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Then you get the you get the, you get the call on on the big card, right? Um, you are fighting Richardson Hitchens on on Showtime. Um, Richardson Hitchens is one of the most touted prospects in the sport. You know, um, he's extremely talented. He's one of the best. You know, he's probably the best 140 pounder right now. What was talk me through that? You get a phone call to fight Richardson Hitchens, who's I guess nine and zero at that time. Um, but he's on everyone's radar. He's one of the you know most touted guys in the sport. What was your mindset going into that fight, and, and what was your reaction when you got that phone call that you're going to fight Richardson Hitchens? When I got that phone call to fight Richardson Hitchens, what, what was going through my mind is, this is my opportunity. This is my opportunity to show people what I could do. You know what I mean? Um, and during that fight, because Richardson Hitchens was upcoming uh, superstar, right? Uh, they they put the, his name on a high pedestal, and so during that fight, during training camps, uh, during training camps, people come into my ear talking about, "Listen, Kev, it's it's a tough fight for you." And honestly, it's nothing tough. You all think it's tough, you know what I mean? But anyways, they say it's a tough fight. You gotta knock him out. You know what I mean? He's a better boxer than you. Well, whoop, 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 whoop. I'm like, and to me, I feel like I like to show people. I like to show people and prove people wrong you know what i mean so i'm like okay so doing so when i went to that fight my mindset wasn't on the lockout my mindset was i'll box him i'll still skill him and let the people see that he cannot touch me he can't see me skill skill wise he cannot see me i proved that to a lot of people i proved that to a lot of people but once again you know what i mean they gave him a decision the whole arena boo I was so I was so mad. <laughs> I was so mad. I'm like, oh this, I I could have knocked his ass. I could have knocked his ass out. You know what I mean? And guy? I could have knocked him out. And then I had I had him. I had him dazed. I had him dazed, but I didn't finish it. You know what I mean? Because like I said, you know, I was listening to people. You know, outside of the rink. You know what I mean? And once again, I still proved myself. You know what I mean? That I I'm out skilled him. Out boxed him. But once again, though. And coming on the B side, you know what I'm saying? That's that that was um I, I could have listened. I you know what I mean? I could have put him asleep, you know what I'm saying, to get that W. You fought him really, listen to people. really competitively. I mean, he, he's the A side, he got the nod in a very, very close 50-50 type of fight. But talk a little about Richard, how was his power and what was it, it what was like what was it like being in with a world class fighter? Did you kind of say, hey, if I can hang in and and fight an even fight with this guy, I can fight anyone in the world? Oh yeah, absolutely. Look, listen, when I when I got when I fought him, it was honestly, truth be told, it was super easy. <laughs> like one of my easiest matches in my career. Super easy. I was toil with him, I was counting him. I was sticking my tongue out. I'm black. I was blocking shots and laughing at them, and then hitting with my couple shots. So it was so easy. I was to toying with them because I I wanted to get people to see how easy this is, and it was very easy. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't think he has the uh, he has the capability for anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like not me. You know what I mean? You can you can fight anybody. Whatever the case may be, but with me, you now I put myself on a high pedestal. Nobody not better than me. Were you surprised with his last fight on how difficult uh, the Argentinian Gustavo Lamos made the fight, or were you like, 
No, I, I saw those flaws in him when I fought him. What were your thoughts on? Uh, did you see it? Well, yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um, honestly, when he when he got uh, when he won that fight, you know, I was shocked. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, oh boy, I feel like he did enough. He hurt Richardson Hitchens many times, um, but once again, that that dude don't got power like how I do. I would knock Richardson Hitchens out. You know what I mean? During the rematch, I guarantee no judges needed for the rematch. I promise you this. It's, that's that's what we like to hear. Um, you know, that, that was a, a big card. It was on Showtime. If you remember that card, Xavier Martinez was on that card. Roly Ramiro was on that card. Uh, they were on your card, and you didn't get the decision. A lot of people thought you won that fight. A lot of people thought you won that. Um, what did that? I mean, what mm -hmm. did that do for you, your career, and what did it do for your confidence? Um, you know, coming off that fight. Well, after after I showcased my 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 dominance in that fight, um, the next day, uh, Floyd Floyd came to the gym the next day, and he ended up um you know saying that hey hey listen you know it's all about bi it's business right, so that in itself that statement there says that says it all because he was there at that fight he was there at that fight with me Richards and Hitchens he was there, so the next day. He came to the gym and he said, "Hey, you gonna be you you gonna be great, you know what I mean? But you know it's just business, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, I get it, you know what I'm saying? I told I to get it, 100. I get it. It's I business, it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's politics, whatever case may be, I get it 100. You know what I'm saying? But I know I also know how to def uh, win in those type of situations again. So, like I said, I said I get it, you know what I'm saying? But net rematch, he's out. He's gonna be out cold." Ain't no decision. Uh, how, Ain't gonna be no decision. I, I want to get to that, right? Because is that ultimately your goal? Is that what you wanted? What's What's more important to you? A world title or avenging that loss to Richardson Hitchens? Like, what What's What's more important? If you had a choice, rematch with Richardson Hitchens, fight for a title. Which would you choose? Fight, fight, um, Richardson Hitchens. I really don't care about belts, honestly. Um, what I care about is fighting the best. You know, what I'm saying belts gonna come, money gonna come, but fight the best. You know, put your stamp as your stamp. Put my stamp on this. Uh, this boxing, this the sport of boxing. I'm here to fight the best. I want. I want people to see. Look up Kevin Johnson and look at my track record. You know what I mean? Undefeated fighters. He won. Undefeated fighters. He won. Oh, they think Sergio Matias. They think he was tough. Kevin Johnson dominated. Beat him. You know what I mean? So I want to put my stamp on. I don't need a tune I'm not I don't need a tune up fight. I'm not a tune up fighter. I'm not a person that, to to accept tune ups. That's not me. I want these I want real deals. I want the these hard fights. And I will I promise you to everybody I will make it easy. I promise you that. So uh after uh you fight Hitchens uh you, you lose a close decision. You fight on another Hitchens card. You pick up a win. And then you get your next big opportunity. Um, after the Hitchens fight, uh, you fight undefeated guy 15-0, uh, Lewis David Salazar. And this is the Nonito Donaire and Obali card that you're on. 15 yeah, fight, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dominated. Super Matias fights uh, Dukenbaev on this card. Right, It's a big card. It's a showtime card. Gary Antoine Russell's on the card, and uh, you fight. I want to you know, fight him too. While we talking about yeah. Gary Russell, <laughs> you fight. 15 I want. Yeah, fighter, uh, fifteen zero fighter. You dominate. But you drop him. I don't know how many times. Three, three times. How many times you drop him? Uh, and yeah, and three times. Yeah, three fight. times. Yeah. Talk about that fight. That was probably given the stage, the level of opposition. Is that your best performance so far, or, or what? I mean, how would you rate that performance? Yeah, honestly, that's my. I feel like I rate it as a ten, ten out of ten. You know, that's one. That is one of my best performance. Um, because the reason why is because I was so I was I during training camp. I kept telling my coach Otis, God gifted me this, and I kept telling him, Listen, I'm telling you, I. The higher power, I feel it. You know what I mean? Everything was working in training camp and, and uh, meditation and, and praying to God and spiritual. My spirit just says it. You know what I'm saying? And um, 
I was so confident going in that fight. I, I was so confident, you know. Um, I dropped him the first uh, drop. Um, he came in. I was on the ropes. I counter, boom, got, and he dropped. That's when I knew I can create this again and create it again and create it again. He was a tough fighter, though. <laughs> I'll tell you that he kept getting up. <laughs> But he, you well, know, I mean, like, he's, you know, it, he's it, fighting for a PPC contract. They have their eyes on him. You know, he's fighting for a lot. And I mean, you won every minute of the every round. You dominated him. You dropped him. I think three times until you dropped him a lot of times. I, I lost count. But I mean, that was a really, mm -hmm. really impressive win, right? Um, which should have put you on a world stage. Um, you know, what, what happened after that? You fight another undefeated fighter again. Uh, you get a, another stop. It's over uh, a rock uh, in, in Las Vegas again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. rock. Yep. This is uh, the Brandon Figueroa Stephen Fulton card. So this is 2020, 2021, late 2021. Um, where, where are you now in your career? Like, where, where do you think you are? Are you ready for world titles? Are you ready for, you know, top 10 competition? You know, coming off that fight, where are you yeah. in your mind? Yeah, I'm definitely um uh, ready for a top ten um top ten opponent. You know what I mean? To bring me bring the best out of me, because honestly, I feel like nobody didn't bring the best out of me. Um, with, with Rock, I feel like oh, it was so it was such an easy fight because <laughs> like I was just like Richards and Hitchin, I was toil toil with him, but honestly, because I feel like um. I feel like he was undefeated, and once again, I get uh, I get excited about an undefeated fighter because I'm like, yeah, it makes you hungry. You know what I mean? It's, to me, I feel like it makes you hungry more, more. Um, you know, oh, I want this. I want to take this undefeated record, right? I want to take this oh away from him. So we're rock. These are you know, guys that don't know how to was, lose. These are guys who've never lost until they get in the ring with you. Yeah. These, yeah. Exactly. These are guys that never lost. These are guys that people high, give them high praise. Oh, he's undefeated. So I let I left I laugh at that because I'm like, dude, this dude, he's ain't, ain't he's a bum to me. I feel like to me, I like he's he make mistakes. He makes some mistakes and you all y'all praise him. You know, look at the mistakes that he he be making. You know, he don't correct himself, you know. Uh, so these type of um, fighters I want to fight, you know, the, those that don't correct themselves, you know. I want to talk about 2022 because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Texas guy. 2022, you fought a couple times on Cameron Davies cards in San Antonio. Uh, how did that come about and how did you enjoy fighting in Texas? You fought two, you know, uh, decent veterans in uh, Vicente uh, Martin Rodriguez and Alejandro Frias. Uh, how did you like fighting in Texas and, and what was that vibe like for you? Oh uh, well, um, first and foremost, I want to appreciate Cam for giving me this opportunity to fight under his um on, on his car uh, in, in his events in Texas. It, it was lit, man. It was he throw the most exciting card ever in Texas. You have to be there. Like when he throw a card, it's amazing. You know what I mean? Uh, his production team is am amazing, incredible. Um, but fighting, fighting. In those events, it's it's it was it was ecstatic. It was ecstatic. You know what I mean? Like, is where no words can I explain. You know what I mean? He brings music plus boxing all in one in the sport of boxing. You know? He puts on a show. It's it's entertainment. It's a show. He put yeah. uh, that. He put on a show. He put on a show, and the fighters that fight on this card, they they can really fight. You know what I mean? You will experience knockouts and. Just you know, people throwing their hands. You know what I mean. So yeah, absolutely. All right, I, I want to. You, you've been out of the ring now a little bit over a year, about fifteen months. Um, when are you going to be back in the ring? Is everything okay? You dealing with injuries? You dealing with out of the ring stuff? You know how you been, how have you been dealing with that layoff? Yeah, this, this layoff. Um, I just been chilling, man, uh, with the family stuff like that. I did have a shoulder in injury, like okay. Three, three, four months ago, but um, it's healed. It's healed now. You know what I mean. I'm ready to get back in the ring and things in that nature. And 
I still be working. I'm I'm still at the gym. You're Nothing like stops me. You look you look like you're in fight shape. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm walking down. I'm walking around at 150 right now, and my fight weight is at 140. You know, so I'm not too far out. You know what I mean? So I'm ready to fight whenever they give me that date. You know what I'm saying? Uh, soon to be. You know, we gonna talk more about it when um uh, about the date. Got to come back on here, but um, can't wait. For sure, for sure. Um, now 140 pound division. I, I want to get your take on it. Just had a major upset. I wanted. To, what were your thoughts before the Haney Garcia fight, and and what did you think of the fight? Like, Who did you think was going to win, and, and what did you think of of the Haney Garcia fight in in your weight class? Yeah. Um. Honestly, I don't think it's a. It was an upset. You know what I mean? Not to me because. Once again, you guys got to understand, Ryan Garcia also been boxing as a kid as well, too. You know, he'd been doing this for years. So, um, it to me, it wasn't really an upset. Um, but I, I told everyone that I, I picked, I picked, I didn't pick nobody, honestly. It was 50-50 fight for me, you know what I mean? But I, I this what I like to analyze boxing, and I like to tell people about if they do, if they do this, they're gonna win. If they do this, they're gonna win because everybody has a chance, right? So I told everybody, Ryan Garcia, very st strong in the big in the, in the earlier rounds, he gonna hit Devin with the hook. He's gonna hit him with the hook. Like now, it depends on how Devin gonna take it. I feel like Ryan has that knockout power. He hit hard. You know what I mean? His the KO ratio is through the roof. You know. And then with Devin, I told everybody. How Devin gonna win is he have to box, you know he have to box and he have and that's it basically he gonna be winning rounds, but once again he's gonna hit he's gonna get hit with the hook you know what I'm saying that's that's an edible you know you can't you cannot block it honestly you know what I'm saying but. When you look at Ryan Garcia, right? Obviously, he's got natural gifts. He's got incredible speed, explosiveness, power, but he's flawed, right? Like, there's a lot of flaws in, in Ryan Garcia. Do you look at him like, oh, I can't box? Yeah, I, I can beat this guy. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot of flaws in Ryan Garcia. You know, uh, he turned his back, uh, he turned his head. Um, he throw he throw many left hooks. You know. And if you haven't if you haven't done boxing, everybody knows when you when you get your hands up, right? The 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 first instinct is for boxers is to catch jab. This here. So yeah. the first instinct is this. Ryan don't throw jabs. So once you do this, he come around, hit you with the hook. So that's why I tell people Ryan Garcia has a tricky hook. You can't. It's it, you gonna get hit with it because you, like I said, you know what I mean. Boxers, you know what I mean. Professionally, like we used to catch, catch, catch. You know what I mean. Um, if you're very smart and very and you have that high IQ, you'll see that. You know what I mean. You'll see yeah, the hooks. But if you don't have a, a high IQ, your instinct is gonna do go here. You know what I mean. But um, I told everybody, like, you know, he's very strong in his left hooks, you know. You know, he's got incredible natural talent and, and gifts, speed, power. Like, you know, he, he, there's, there's a lot of good stuff about him. He's just, like we said, he's flawed. He doesn't jab. He, he does weird things defensively, like turns his back, right? Like, he can be hacked. Mm -hmm. And yeah. someone with your speed. Like, you saw someone like Luke Campbell, who doesn't really have world-class speed, give him a lot of trouble before he got knocked out. It's like, this guy can be outboxed right like he, he can be had right yeah um yeah now, yeah you're in a really interesting division we talked about gary antoine russell richardson hitchens obviously there's ryan and devin mm -hmm. and tfima lopez regis pro gray is still a player who if you could make any fight you wanted who would you fight next sergio martinez i want that fight i want gary russell and um I also at 140 division as well I want um I think Tia is not at 140 no more, huh? He went up to 147. Tio's still at 140. He's still at 140. Yeah. And so that can be fight that fight can be made as well too at 140. It's a really, really but I want I want I want the 
it's an interesting division right now. Uh, you're definitely mm-hmm. a player in it. You got to come back when all the details are, are ironed out and, and, and we have an official date. Uh, but it's been an honor. It's been a right. pleasure having you on. Uh, tell everyone where they can find you on, on social media. Yeah, you can find me at Kevin Thunstorm Johnson on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and also my Instagram on uh, my t- Twitter page at Kevin Thunder at Kevin Thunder ST1. Uh, follow me all on my f- social media platforms, man. Um, once again, I'm that boogeyman under the bed with a lot of fighters at 140. You know what I'm saying? They cannot touch me. They cannot see me. I have the blueprint to be everybody, and the reason why I have the blueprint to be everybody. Is because I know the mistakes that they do, and they don't like to correct themselves. To, to me, I humble myself and I correct myself. If I get hit with a hook, I know how to stop it and I know how to block it. I'm I'm here to, you know, make the one to forty division like an upset. You know what I mean? An upset. Absolutely. He, you've done that so far. You, you you've been a, a you know a pleasure to watch. It's been a joy to watch you. Uh, you've beaten six undefeated fighters. You almost have another victory over Richardson Hitchens. I uh, can't wait to see you back in the ring. Uh, Kevin Thunderstorm Johnson, thanks for coming on. Look forward to speaking with you soon. God bless, champ. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. You know what I mean? Always keep God first. And stay safe, my champ. Stay safe. God bless.